Today in Crazy Performance Repair, we're going to show you a quick little shortcut on differential ring and pinion gears. As far as when you're changing gears out, like you're going from a, a 350 gear to a 411 or something like that, and you have to set this pinion up, there's a shortcut to making it so that it can go a lot easier for you than pressing and removing this bearing constantly and making it a real, real tough job to do. So stay tuned. As you can see, I have a pinion gear right here. And this is for a 11 and a half inch Dodge differential. A very, very large differential. The carrier and ring gear alone weighs 76 pounds. I weighed it just because I was curious because it was so damn heavy. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little overview quick of a shortcut that I have learned for setting up rear ends. Now, one major thing is the, the shims here. So the stock pinion gear, if you're up to the task and you don't have a ton of shims, uh, the kit that I got with this one came with quite a few shims, so I have plenty. But uh, one thing you can do if, you, if you're willing to take the time to pull this bearing off, if you pull this off without damaging it even, uh, then you can use this one for what I'm about to tell you in a, in a couple minutes here. But uh, the shim that's underneath here, if you use that shim, when you transfer it over, it will be very, very close to where it needs to be. Now, this particular rear end, there's enough room here for me to take the shims that are in here and figure out what the shim depth is on this one. A lot of times you don't have that option. You, you don't have this flange available for the top of this and to, to kind of sneak it in there and see what size shim is in there. I actually had that option on this one and this is about as close as I can get. There are three shims here, all the thickish ones of the kit. I didn't actually measure them, I just sat there and played with them until I found one that, uh, or a, a set that actually fit pretty nicely. Looks like I dinged them a little bit when I dropped them just a minute ago. There we go. But, uh, so, the shortcut for doing this is, it's probably something some of you know, uh, but a lot of you will not realize this. Now, when you do these, and you take this bearing, and you press it into place, and then you go and put it in the differential, and if these shims are off, guess what? You got to pull it all back apart again. And these bearings can be real tough to get out. Even if you have the proper bearing removal uh, devices, the, the, the things to do it, it can be very, very, very tough to get these things off of there. Uh, but I have a solution to that, that that some people might think isn't the greatest idea, but if you do it right, it works out just fine. So when, when these differentials are running, the bearing might get a little warmer than the pinion just because this is a large mass of metal, but the fact is these are pressed together, so the heat fairly close to the same time, and it's not really gonna, gonna move, you know, it's not gonna expand so much that it's gonna come off of here if this is a loose fit. So your goal is to actually create a loose fit, not, not loose to hand standards, but loose to the press standards. So normally these are probably press fit about two thousandths of a press fit. And what you want to do is get about half a thou press fit. So you take this bearing and you actually literally hone it out in the hone. And I have a vise down here. And you know, it's just a cheap piece of crap vise. It, it really doesn't matter as long as the jaws go big enough. My good vise is over in the other room. But I just throw it in the vise like this. And then never mind my crummy hone stones that are pretty much shot, completely shot. Because as you can see, I have little pieces of emery cloth on here that I just took some spray adhesive and threw on there. Uh, if you guys haven't used this Gorilla Glue, by the way, I'll throw a link in the description below. This is actually some really nice spray adhesive. But anyway, uh, so what I do is I just take a hone, normally not with, yeah, you know, <laughs> emery cloth on it. And I take the hone and I throw it in here and I'll hone it out a little bit. Now, I only wanna go a little bit more I'm pretty much done doing this. It does take some time to do this on, on the bearing, especially when they're this big of a bearing. Uh, but one thing I wanna make sure that you guys pay attention to is when you're doing this, you wanna take the hone and the back of the bearing is back here. And you wanna hone out the back just slightly bigger than the middle and the top area. And I'll explain that in a second here, but I'm gonna go ahead and quickly just do the, the pass that I need to do on here. <clears throat> you 
Now, as you can imagine, doing that throws a little bit of sand and grit into this bearing area, and people will cringe at that. But the fact of the matter is, if this bearing doesn't have oil or grease on it, it's very easy to get that cleaned out with a little bit of brake clean and some air to, to spray it all out of there. Uh, you can, a lot of times, take your air nozzle, hit it at an angle here, it'll twirl the cage and just throw everything out of it. Uh, it does a very good job of cleaning these out, as long as they're nice and dry. So be sure if you have one of those bearings that has that goofy, oily, residue, greasy crap on it, clean them off before you even bother doing this. Get some brake clean and clean them off real good so that they're nice, clean, dry bearings. And as long as they're dry, it's easy to get all that dirt and debris out of there. So when it comes to fitting these things, and I mentioned the honing out this side just a little bit more than this side, it creates kind of a wedge effect. And that'll help you when it comes to applying this, because a lot of times when you're putting these things on, this little bit of a uh, contour that's in here isn't enough to completely center it. So by doing that, since you're honing it out to have a very light press fit, what it creates is a spot where this will actually drop below that area because it's bigger, it's not a press fit, at the bottom area. This one should be really close to where I need it. It's very, very close, but it allows me to get it down past a little ways. That way it self-centers. If I look up here at the top and I look right around this area, I can see an even gap all the way around this, this part of the, the pinion here. And that's good. That means this thing's gonna press on nice and straight and it's gonna press on easy because I honed this thing out as much as I did. I'm not gonna press it on on video today, but I just wanted to make sure I got that out there for you guys. Now, the other bearing on the pinion here, this particular vehicle, oh, there's still the grease up here on the top. I wiped the bottom down, but not the top. Uh, I'll have to wipe the top down here in a little bit, but this part of the bearing, uh, this area, most of the time you do not have to hone this bearing out uh, it, it really doesn't help because you're able to tap this hard enough to push this thing out of there without damaging the bearing. However, a big differential like this, it, it is an advantage to take and hone this thing out so it's not such a tight press fit because when you're taking this thing in and out, every time you take it out, this bearing also comes out, as you know. So uh, what I will end up doing is on this one, I will hone this out a little bit. It'll still be a tighter fit than what this one is, but it will still be looser than, than the original fit because I'm going to be taking this thing on and off. So that's that's one tip that is extremely helpful because then you can take this and take it apart and put it together until you get the right shimming to get that perfect pinion depth. I am very, very picky when it comes to setting up the rear gears. Uh, the, the tooth pattern has to be absolutely perfect to, for me. I hate noise. When it comes to those rear gears, I want absolutely zero noise, uh, as minimal as possible. And so I like to get that that pattern dead nuts in that gear wear area. So what I'm gonna do is do that. Um, one more little note is when you're setting up these, these pinion depths, most will know this, but every once in a while somebody doesn't understand this. This crush sleeve that's on here, uh, some vehicles have shims, but this one has a crush sleeve. If you have a crush sleeve vehicle, you can either transfer over the stock one for now, or just leave it out. What you want to do for setting up the ring gear, or pinion gear, is leave that out so you don't crush it, because otherwise you're going to have to crush it in order to set the step. And if you crush it, it's done. That, that's it. So wait until the very end to install that. Wait till you know you have the, the setup right, and then you can go ahead and put that thing in there. So leave the seal out, and leave that crush sleeve out. Get your pinion depth set. Once your pinion depth is set, then you can go ahead, install it, install the pinion, get it all put together, and then work hard on getting that ring gear set perfectly. So that's kind of my procedure for doing this. I always end up completely ruining the time. I don't get paid as well for these jobs. These are one of those jobs that book time calls for five, six hours, whatever it calls for, and I end up spending seven or eight most of the time. I end up just destroying myself on book times. Um, probably because of how picky I am. I don't, you know, doing this does take a little time, especially on a rear end like this, but it saves me a lot of time. If, if I were to do it the press way, I would waste so much time because of how picky I am. It's just, it's stupid. So I just want to get that out there. If you uh, like this little shortcut or tip for you, um, be sure to hit the like button. You know what to do. 
Uh, like, share, subscribe, and as always, hope to see you on the next video.